Hello everyone. Today we're working on an Xbox One S board, this one here, and it had a crazy amount of faults. We'll use the newest version of the Xbox Postcode tool because a lot has changed and got better, and I'll show you how to flash it. First connect the Pico to the PC in boot select mode. Do that by holding the boot select button and then plugging it into the PC. This window should appear. Getting the UF2 file to the Pico got a lot easier now. You can just go on the site I link below, then click on Usage, and then click Latest Release. Click here to download the latest zip. We go to our Downloads folder, then Extract, and then we drag and drop the UF2 file onto the Pico down here, and it will flash itself and disconnect. Pico is set up now. You still have to connect the Pico to the uh, console, of course. And for that, there's a nice big sheet here for the Xbox One and Series consoles made by Ace IO. Big shout out to him. And uh, as you can see, Series consoles are also supported. A few of you were asking that in the comments. And just in case you're wondering, this is my setup here. Um, that's how I connect it. Just like on the sheet, on the side, clock and data, ground. The PuTTY method is outdated and it's now recommended to use the GUI tax user coded custom for this project. It allows you to have all the updated codes and fix methods because it auto updates and it also presents everything in this nice GUI. You just scroll down a bit and click on releases page and then download the one for your system. I use the Win X64. Open the folder download to so your download order then unpack the file and you just run this exe file. Here you just select the COM port your Pico connected to and then press connect. Now it already realized what Pico firmware it is on and the last meta update is displayed here, app version and stuff. And as soon as the console throws error codes or postcodes now, you will see them here. Let's now jump to the diagnosing of this hell of a console. Hey guys, so I just fixed OXE003 error, that's a power group A error and VMEMIO was the problem of mine. This chip here and the MOSFET was dead. So now we get a new error OXE006 and that is um, CPU GFX power good timeout. And I just checked why it's go doing that. And we can see when I power it on again that we are not getting a proper voltage on the enable line for the drivers. We get close to nothing. And all we have is 160 ohm. So I will either replace these drivers, but I think they are already changed, so I will replace the NCP next. I will now apply some flux and then with a hot air station flow the chip back in place. Now I manually resolder all the chips legs with uh, some solder and a soldering iron just to get that really good connection. I've replaced NCP and let's see what is going on now. Hope for the best. We got SMC thermal unknown. Wait, I will show you. 
desktop here SMC server unknown we have fixed the NCP circuit no way wait let me measure we are looking for around one volt on each let's go for CPU first I think there was I think there was one volt that was there before I had nothing okay and GPU Also, we saw something on the multimeter. So now we have to fix the next error. So yeah, as you just saw, when you connect to the Pico with the correct uh, console selected, you can uh, get explanations that I all wrote and it will tell you what to do. So um, for SMC thermal E4 to one, you have to check this voltage, check ICs and uh, check a few resistors. I think we should go for the resistors first, it's the easiest to check. I went to look for R5T27 and look right here. It's just missing off the board. And this cap also doesn't look good, I will also straighten that. But I think that's our problem. Zero ohm resistor has been replaced with a wire, a well calibrated one, and the capacitor has been resoldered. Let's see what we get now. COM4 connect. And I need to power on the console. Boom. Let's see. Oh, we have stuff happening. Okay, let's pause here for a second. Um, so, what happened? Mm. We get a kind of working boot process, but then we fail with 9134 CPU memory S. General memory error, okay. We need to check VMIO, VTT A to D, resistances and voltages, and also resistors around the RAMs. If nothing works, we have to replace the RAM and reboot APU. Okay. EC06 we get a few times too, that's just a byproduct. Okay, let's check the voltages around the RAM and then go looking for defective resistors. I will show you my memory sheet here first. So pretty much first thing we should do with the mem error, you should check the memio voltage, 1.5 volts right here, because all the RAM chips use it. So confirm with 1.5 volts here. Then the different channels D, C, A and B also need VTT voltages. There's a voltage per channel. So VTT A can be checked on this capacitor, VTT B can be checked on this capacitor, VTT C can be checked on this capacitor here and VTT D can be checked on this capacitor here. Without the VTT voltage the channel can start up and we get a memory error. Let's check these voltages. Okay, let's start with the MemIO. I will place my probe here and you watch the multimeter and I power on. We get 1.5 volts. Okay, that is good. Power off again. VTTA. It's going to be checked on the capacitor right there. Let me locate it here. We need 0.7 volts there. Yes, we have that. Nice. VTTB down there. Okay, power on again. Available. C is down here. Let's see. Is there? Nice. And the last one, VTTD up here. Um, here, yeah. Let's try. 0.75 volts. Nice. Okay, all watch is available. Next, I will check for broken resistors or corroded resistors around the ramps. Well, look what I found here. This looks like a broken resistor, right? 
Let's replace that. Okay, so the resistor has been replaced. Let's check what the console does now. We connect again and I give it power. Let's see now. And it's perfect, okay. So we got SP boot success, CPU boot success, which means when I power it on the console now, we shouldn't get any errors and it should stay on. So, beep on and let's see now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's staying on. So I do have to fix some stuff in the video circuit now. HDMI retimer is missing, ports are missing, USB port at the front is missing. So this needs some work, but um, yeah, it's, it's booting now. So we reached our goal with this console now. Um, this GUI tool is very awesome. Um, I've been collecting many error codes, so you guys have an easy life, can just read what's written there, diagnose quick and easy. And yeah, you can download from the description below. If you have any recommendations or need help with the tool or with an arrow you're facing on the console, drop my Discord below and I will try to help you. I hope you like this video, like and subscribe if you want to support this channel and see you in the next one. Bye.